For this lesson, we'll be going over relative stability. Now, relative stability is a very easy one to understand and very easy one to learn. However, if you've never seen it before, it's best to at least get an overview of it. That way it doesn't bite you in the rear later and it's an easy problem you could have answered in five seconds. Now, relative stability consists of your gain margin and your phase margin, and we'll go over that in the later slides. Relative stability represents the degree of how close a system is to being unstable. The relative stability parameters consist of the gain margin and the phase margin for both discrete time and continuous time systems. Ideally, a positive gain and a positive phase margin will ensure stability. Now for this lesson, we'll be mostly focusing on open loop transfer functions of systems. So let's go over gain margin. Gain margin represents the amount a system gain can increase while maintaining stability. Simply stated, if you wanted to calculate this or find this on a Bode plot, it's the number of decibels below zero decibels at the phase of negative 180 degrees. That's also considered your phase crossover frequency. I did provide the textbook equations as well as the simplistic equation. So if you want to find the gain margin, it's going to be zero minus the amount of decibels from 100, negative 180 degrees. Now you're gonna need your phase response Bode plot as well as your frequency response Bode plot completely next to each other. That way you can draw your lines to understand where your gain margin is. Lastly, we have our phase margin. The phase margin represents the amount of phase lag a system can endure while maintaining stability. Simply stated, if you're trying to find this on a Bode plot, it's the number of degrees from negative 180 when the transfer function intersects the zero decibel gain threshold. That's also called your gain crossover frequency. So in the picture below, we started at negative 180 degrees with the green line and counted up until we found where our magnitude intersect our zero decibels. From there, we're able to find our phase margin. And we're going to go over this in a practice problem. That way you get an idea of how I found it. We're ourselves out with a very good example here. So right now I have a transfer function plotted out right here. And we're not trying to find the equation. We're just trying to find the gain margin and the phase margin. So we're going to start by trying to find our gain margin, which is this guy right here. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to try to find our phase crossover frequency. Our phase crossover frequency is when your phase response plot intersects 180. So when your plot hits 180, which is right there, and then you follow it all the way up to your magnitude chart, and that's where you draw a line right there. So if I was drawing a line out from here to here, that's what it look like. Because you need both these plots right on top of each other to be able to do this. So right now I have one of my points. Step two, once you're able to find your phase crossover frequency on your magnitude chart, now you want to count from this point all the way to zero magnitude. Right now I have a dot right there. So we're going to count from here all the way to zero and that will be your gain margin. Now here's the trick. Count from your crossover frequency point all the way to zero. So you're going to be counting in the positive direction for this one. So we're going to go negative 40. So we're going negative 40, 30, 20, 10, 0. So we increased by 40 decibels. You went up 40 decibels. So that's an increase. And I'll tell you what, I'll go back to this color. That way you might be able to see it better. Plus 40 decibels. Very simple. You're going to use your phase to find your gain margin. Okay? Very simple one. Number two, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to use our magnitude plot to find our phase margin. So I'm picking our color, say blue. I want to see where our magnitude intersects zero. Or intersects zero right there. Okay? And same thing, you draw a line going down. I'm going to go from here all the way down. I'm going to draw a dot right there. So it looks like right there, which is negative 135 degrees, which is right there. So we just found our gain crossover frequency right there and then all the way down, negative 135. So the next step is you're going to find where 180 is, which is right there, and then you're going to count up to this one point, the equation in the PowerPoint. So it's going to be PM equals 
180 minus the difference of phase, which is, which is 180 minus, and this is 135, difference in phase, is going to be phase margin of 45 degrees. So, because all we do is count from here to here, if you actually count up from these points right here, it's going to be a 45 degree increase. And I'll change colors, make it easy. So our phase margin, positive 45 degrees. All right, let's do one more problem. So we already have two plots in front of us. Let's start by finding the gain margin. The gain margin is found using the phase response plot. So the way you do that is you find out where your phase response plot intersects the negative 180 degrees. So right there, it's negative 180. So you follow the line over until you hit negative 180, which is about right there is a negative 180 degrees, right there. Also known as your phase crossover frequency. So once you found that, all you have to do is draw a line all the way up to determine where that intersects on your magnitude plot. So let me draw a line for you, see if it will help. So I'm going to go from here all the way up, straight line, because these two plots are uh, are perfectly even. So I'm going to go right there. So I'm going to have a dot right there. That's pretty good. Okay. Next, you want to count from this point all the way to zero. Got it. We're already here. We're at 20 decibels right here. So from 20 decimals all the way to zero. So that means, and I'll tell you what, I'll go back to yellow, which means, number one, our gain margin is going to be negative 20 decibels because you're counting from this point down. And so it's going in the negative direction when you're counting. Try to find your phase response. Your phase response is very simple. You're going to, have to use your magnitude plot to find your phase response. By doing that, you find out where your magnitude intersects zero. So it's right there. And it looks like it's at 10K. So it's right there. So if you draw a line all the way down, and I'll tell you what, I'll do that just to, since we did it on the first one. It says we're going to have a dot right there. Okay, so we have a dot right there. And looking at that, that looks to be about, say, about 225. 225 degrees is neg that's about where that's at. Follow that line over. It's right there. It's at 225. Well, here's the bad news. We're going 225 to negative 180. So we're going from here to here. Well, the only problem is when you go in that direction, you're also going negative. You're going downward when you count. So we're going from 180 to this point. Talked about it's going to be your phase margin. It's going to be equal to 180 be minus the difference what phase you're at. So it's going to be, redraw it, 180 minus 225. So that's going to give us a negative 45 degrees, which is also not good because now we have a negative number. So both our PM and our GM, our gain margin and phase margin, are going to be negative numbers, negative 45 degrees. Solving your relative stability questions are very simple. It's not something that's very complex at all. You just got to know how to understand it and you got to know where to plot and how to draw your lines out. It's not very difficult at all. This type of questions should be very simple to you. If you have any more questions, please let me know and I hope you all have a good day.